Catch it once, catch it twice. Either way, it's still a roll of the dice. Welcome back to the Sunshine State Rails. Wednesday, the 23rd of June. The title of this video tells you exactly why we're here. We're headed north through the hills of Central Florida for a very special train, which many have considered Florida's worst kept secret. We were headed to Bushnell to begin what we would attempt to make a chase, showing up there just after 10 a.m. and my friend Chase showing up a couple hours later and a few trains just after him. Running almost 12 hours late and thereby becoming a daylight train down here was Q603, mostly mixed freight loads for Winston. I'll use the time while 603's passing, because there really wasn't much when the chase started, about just what's happening today. We're currently at Bushnell waiting on CSX train P00123. This train symbol is P, two zeros, a one, and 23 for the date, but for ease of talk we're gonna use P 001. This day they're using that symbol for the CSX OCS, or Office Car Special. And the big hype about today's train is that instead of up north, it's coming to Tampa. The purpose of the train itself is fairly simple. Transport company executive people to where they want to go. The reasoning behind why these executives choose to go where they go when they choose to go is not exactly known to me. It could be for a business meeting, a confidential reason that no one's supposed to know, or simply because they choose to go there, just because. We're thinking that this instance is somewhat like that. Our current theory is that they're coming down here to get a tour of this part of the system and see some of the operations firsthand, as they made stops in both Baldwin and Wildwood Yards on their way down here. Though this wouldn't exactly explain why they've ran it everywhere else up north, but not down to this area since 2017, and where its final destination is on this run since 2014. Either way, a very unique opportunity. 603 got by, and not long later, up from the south came Q452. Nothing new with this train, besides the Birmingham Spirit unit leading. However, as you may see, he's taking the siding here at Bushnell to meet our office car train. And here's a little point about P001. I believe that the office car train holds the highest priority on the system, period. So no matter what's opposing it, everything will get out of its way. So they're throwing Q452 in the siding now to be out of his way, even though 001 wouldn't get here for another 45 minutes. As 452 was passing, we left our spot and headed down to a location that I had planned for this train as Q452 slowed to a stop in the siding. The spot itself would be right here, welcoming northbound drivers to Bushnell, located just south of all the downtown populace. This would be a nice picture opportunity as long as the clouds and rain within them cooperated. We got word that the office car train was blasting off from Wildwood right as we arrived, and only a few lengthy minutes would pass before the train of honor would show itself. we started, knowing very well that this train's speed limit would be much higher than normal because it holds the passenger status, but even said preparation wasn't enough to get around the cars and trucks that we were on the road of. Basically, how can I put this, this train whooped us hard. Essentially, our entire ride from Bushnell South was this train calling signal after signal miles ahead of us, smelling nothing in the air but faint, polished, executive dust. With that said, this train's routing, as well as what happened on it, is gonna pretty much have to all be demonstrated via maps. And something to point out with this train was that it was very unpredictable, with very few people having any idea what it was gonna do. 
The train would continue miles ahead of us down to Vitus Junction, a major turning point in the line. To the right, we have the Vitus subdivision, which leads down into Lakeland, and to the left, eventually, the Yeoman subdivision, the primary Tampa routing. From what most people knew, the train was going to go this way, down the Yeoman side, through Zephyr Hills, Plant City, Valrico, and into Yeoman. But after a few specific signal callouts came through the radio, I realized that he was going this way, down the Vita Sub, through the Green Swamp, down to Lakeland Junction, making a westward turn, and then running into Tampa via Winston, Plant City, Dover, Mango, and AY. This would end up changing a lot of people's plans, but for us, any plans that we had for this train had since gone out our open back window. At this point, like some trains in the past, it was now just get what you can get, and don't be picky. As the radio crackled on though, I could hear 0708 talking to dispatch down in Plant City. He was finished working his customers around that area, and was ready to take off eastward from there and go back to Winston. And dispatch made the very odd decision of giving them lights back to Winston, even though the office car train was already at the top of the Vitus sub. This would result in a very unintentional hitch up. Now the A line is single tracked pretty much from Plant City all the way to South Winston Pass. P001 could not continue west until 0708 diverged onto track 2. So as P001 came into Lakeland, making the westward turn and running down the hill, they saw a red stop indication right here at South Winston because 708 still had not got in there. So as crazy as it sounds, it would end up being a local job that would either slow down substantially or completely stop the company office car train. Back on our end, I picked out a spot on a map and said, we're going to go here and hope it works. However, during all this, 708 got onto track 2 and 001 sped off west toward Plant City without us even hearing it. But we pulled into the back neighborhoods of Plant City and set up by the tracks with 5 minutes and 37 seconds to spare. I timed it. SHGPO 0123 South, I'm going to 1, got it clear. Plant City Interlock and We knew that from this point into Tampa that there was no way that we'd be able to beat him to Tampa, so why would we follow him into Tampa? Maybe because we're idiots, but mostly because we came out specifically for this train, so we might as well go wherever it is. Plus, we heard that they still had some moves to do, so we thought we'd go over to see those. Something else to mention about the OCS train is that the executives that they're hauling do not sleep on the train. Wherever their set terminal for the night is, they'll be offloaded somewhere there and sent to a hotel to get their rest before taking off the next morning at some point. And today, they'd offload the executives at 6th Avenue, which is a road leading into the Tampa Project shop, but crosses the connection track from the Usita side to the Yeoman side. However, once all the big boys were unloaded, the train still had to be turned because the train's final destination on this Floridian trip would be Miami and they would need a Y to do that. They had two options in the area, Nevi and Rockport. And via radio chatter, they would choose to do Nevi. With the train now empty of the main executives, permission was given from dispatch to squeeze in front of Amtrak 92 up to Nevi Y and spin it before coming back to Yeoman for the night. Amtrak is also a reference to this Y because this is the Y that the Silver Service uses to turn their trains around so they can back into Tampa Union Station and then they also go to Miami.
now might also be a nice time to point out, since he's not moving at 60 miles per hour, that this entire train set as well as the locomotives were just recently repainted into Baltimore and Ohio colors. And since the whole train was pressure washed the day before it left Jacksonville, today it's almost spotless. Of the two locomotives pulling, CSX-1 was repainted from F40PH number 9998 and CSX-2 number two repainted from 9993. Also of interest on the train itself are the names of certain executives, each one unique to its own car. Some deceased, some still living, regardless, figures of CSX who have pushed the company forward at some point or another. The practice of using a Y to turn a train's direction involves pulling onto a certain track like here, past a switch which another track which connects to the original track branches from in a different way. Then backing down that second line back to the line they started from effectively turns their direction around so they're now facing the other way on the track they began from. Once they back the train across the switch back to the main line which is just a ways in front of us, they can now pull the train in this direction to go back to Yeoman Yard. And we'd make the move over to New Connection, which is the track connecting the A-Line side back to the Yeoman Yard S-Line side, to get the train creeping into Yeoman for the night. Rounding a couple of their final curves back into Yeoman Yard, this is where P001 would spend the night and get some new fuel before starting the day early tomorrow and hauling the executives to the bottom of the system in Miami. And since people have asked me, no, following or documenting this train's journey any further was not part of our plans the next day. But you know what? The magic of this train being as rare as it is for the state is that with how many people who will be out for this thing wherever it goes, I can almost guarantee you that there will be plenty of other YouTube videos for you to watch of this train's journey once it reaches the bottom in Miami. But I do appreciate you taking some time to watch this portion of its journey here on my side. It was pretty hectic, but in the end, it turned out to not be so bad. And to have seen it at all is really enough for me. So until next time, wherever we find ourselves for whatever's coming. This is Coda Beaner, and I'll see you then on the Sunshine State Rails.